Michelle Baldwin. I'm 45 years old. I'm a single mother of three wonderful children. I'm a paddler, canoe, kayak, raft guide, and the latest sport I picked up was stand-up paddle boarding. I went 10 years without getting a pap test. That was my biggest mistake. When I hemorrhaged, I knew something was very wrong. So I went to the doctor right away, and they said, of course, I had a very abnormal pap, and many tests later, they said I had cervical cancer. Michelle has been very open with her whole family through the two years of cancer. The only time she was not open was when she received the last diagnosis that the cancer had returned for the third time. When I found out that I had a couple months left to live, maybe, maybe six months, kind of floored me, you know, I had cancer for a while, but um, you never like hearing when that you only have six months to live and that's the final offer, says the doc. And so I didn't know what to do with my life at that point. She really wanted to make a difference. It was just the two of us in a coffee shop. And she said, I want to stand a paddleboard the Ganga River in India. I really wanted to bring awareness to India. And so by paddling 700 miles, I was able to have a platform to speak. And I was given a lot of attention in the news in India. I'm here for the women who are voiceless. This disease needs a face and a voice. And I wanted to be the person to bring the subject up in a very public way. And so what I want to see happen is, first of all, the awareness and the call to action that there can be screening available. Watching Michelle come into a room full of doctors and journalists and explain that she was dying, and there was no question about it. And there was always kind of a, a gasp at that because she's so beautiful and she was so healthy and she looked so marvelous on the river. And then to have her say, this disease does not need to happen. I'm Audrey Baldwin. I'm 12, and Michelle Baldwin's my mom. Um, and I've kind of been her helper. I was um, amazed. Paddleboarding had only been in our lives like two weeks before she left. And then she just, hey, I'm going to do this giant trip. I was like, OK. And it was really hard um, having her be gone. But it was something she really had to do. And some people were upset. They said, how can you leave your daughters and your son? And um, it was something she had to do. And I know she wouldn't have done it if we'd said, Mom, don't go. We, we need you here. They don't want any other person to lose their mother like they're losing their mother. They love me so much. And so they talk about it a lot. They're bearing the brunt of the fact that Perhaps I overlooked one thing. I'll sit down at lunch with my friends and say, hey, has your mom gotten her pat? Ask your mom if she's gotten her pat. And they'll say, what's a pat? And I'm like, just ask her if she got it. Paddling down the Ganga, I reached amazing peace because it was my own personal pilgrimage to have 12-hour days where all I had to do was paddle. It allows you to reflect and think and reach an incredible peace of mind and clarity. It was 700 miles and I made it. I was so happy and at the same time so sad because I knew that her trip was over and um, that was a sad realization for me. There has never been a pity party on her part. There has never been why me. She, you, she knows why me, no pap tests for 10 years. So we have joined Michelle in the process. There is um, a heightened conviction on my part that it doesn't need to happen to anybody else's daughters. I would love to think that millions of people could be influenced in any way, shape, or form. I don't think you have to be facing death to face your fears and live your best life. If you have a dream or a goal, and you think it's too big, you don't have to wait till there's a limit or a wall that you're facing to push against. Just go do it.